rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who have died in our community, particularly Michael E. Marinchak, beloved husband, father, son, brother, uncle, and Scranton DPW and Parks and Recreation employee, Agnes C. Bertocchi, widow of Emil R. Bertocchi, former mayor of Old Forge and my friend, devoted mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother, and their dear families and friends who suffer their loss. Also, please keep our former mayor, Jim Connors, who underwent surgery today, in your prayers. Mr. McGough? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Loscombe? Here. Mr. Joyce? Here. Mrs. Evans? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third order, 3A, minutes of the Scranton Police Pension Meeting held July 25th, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received in file. 3B, Minutes of the Firemen's Pension Commission meeting held July 25th, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, Agenda for the City Planning Commission meeting held August 28th, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, Agenda for the Zoning Hearing Board to be held September 19th, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3E, audit status from Robert Rossi and Company, received August 31st and September 5th of 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do any council members have announcements at this time? Just very quickly, uh, I do want to I guess wish congr uh, congratulations to the most foolish woman in the world. Uh, my wife, uh, yesterday we celebrated our 42nd wedding anniversary. Uh, somehow she has managed to stay with me for that long, and I applaud her for that. Congratulations. Congratulations, congratulations Mr. Wigall. Is there anyone else? Tonight, City Council will introduce an ordinance drafted by its solicitor to terminate the cooperation agreement between the City and the Scranton Parking Authority. During fifth order motions, I will call on Attorney Hughes to fully report the most, re most recent developments regarding the Parking Authority. The Southside Senior Center, located at 425 Alder Street in Scranton, will conduct its annual pasta dinner and basket raffle on Thursday, September 20th. Proceeds will benefit the many activities the Senior Center provides to participants 60 years of age and older. That's it. Fourth Order, Citizens Participation. Our first speaker this evening is Ron Ellman. Thank you, Council. I think I got up here in time today. <laughs> you know, over the years, there's many worthwhile suggestions from, from in, just intelligent people, one after another. And, and Council, just, you sit there politely and you listen, but you don't hear. You just don't hear, hear us out here. Uh, 
you know, week after week, it's the same thing in here. Just in action. The people want to see something in concrete. They want to see something, some legislation to stop these, the, the rape of this city by all these nonprofits. It, it, you people just not, you're not getting anything done, and I'm not mad at you. I'm just telling you what I hear. It, it just, it just, you can go anywhere in this city you want, talk to anybody, everybody will tell you they've had enough. They've had enough of Doherty's just gross incompetence in running the city. They've had enough of the stranglehold with the unions, and I'm not anti-union, I belong to two of them, but they have priced themselves out. We can't afford these unions. They've had enough of this fiasco at the SBA, this $100 an hour job deal. The city is broke and nobody wants to acknowledge it. Everybody wants to hire, the school board wants to build. The, the, these two commissioners have hired over 20 people and then they complain that $100,000 salaries aren't enough for them. You know, somebody's just not, you just don't have the heart of the city. You're not listening to what's happening here. 2,000 people didn't pay their taxes. That means the rest of us in the city have to cover for them. Why well, wasn't something done? 2,000 people, you know, I know some of them just had good reasons, but 2,000 people, all that money just sitting there, nothing being done about it. Just like the high school out here that Goodwill has had for years and years. They just the same way. They keep telling us what they're going to do and don't do it. And the commissioners, there must have been four or 5,000 millions of dollars out, nothing being collected. And no wonder we're broke. There's got to be an answer somewhere. You know, you just can't, you can't minimize saying it's only going to cost the homeowner a couple hundred dollars. You've got a half dozen paydays you have to borrow money. We cannot afford it no more. And nobody is getting nothing for their dollar except police and fire protection. You know, I don't have any sidewalks. I don't have no curbs. My yard floods when it rains because there's no sewer. It's been that way, I don't know, 15, 20 years. Nothing been done. Now I'm supposed to pay and pay and pay. It's not right. 150 houses and families up there in Kaiser Avenue, they don't pay nothing for 10 years and they got everything I don't have. They got sidewalk streets. You, they built a school. There were so many kids. They're not paying for the school. I haven't had any kids in school in 30 years. It's just, the city is just so mismanaged. And, and like I said, people come here and they tell you and they tell you and they tell you and nothing's said, nothing's done. It's time something's done for the people of this city once and for all. I'm telling you, what we need to do as every seat comes vacant, we need to fill it with a new face. Maybe that would help. Because I don't know what else will. It's just a shame, you know. The only one that people talk positive in council is Mr. Rogan. Because he didn't want to give any money to the SPA. That was throwing away money. And it got worse down there, not better. They made their salaries when the people in this this building didn't. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense to the taxpayers. I, I, I don't know. I, I've, I've read a little about Mr. Lewis's plan, and what I like about it is he's using cold, hard facts on paper what we made and going from there. You can't, you just can't budget on speculation. Every, every week there's a house in there, two, three hundred thousand dollars taken off the tax roll. So how can you budget when that keeps going on and never ending? It, I don't want to scold you all. I support you. You're, you're, you're our voice to the city, but you, you, you just got to listen to the, what's going on here and acknowledge it for God's sake. The city is going to pot. They, 
the city appraised my house a few years ago at 101,000. A couple months ago, the real estate man said, I'd be lucky to get 75 because my neighborhood has gone downhill. That's all over the place, mm -hmm. except around the mayor's old house. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Greg Hulse. Hulsey? Hulse. Okay. Good evening. My name is Greg Hulse, city resident and taxpayer. Good evening. For, for the last couple of months, I've attended city council and other public meetings in utter amazement. I've sat by and watched my fellow citizens rant, complain, and grandstand in front of the cameras. In these last few months, I have heard about everything that's wrong with this city, but rarely have I heard any, anyone offer a positive solution for our future. I freely admit there are lots of things wrong with this city, from the out-of-control spending in the Yard Park, the KOZ, uh, the KOZ zones that were, Ill, well, that were an ill-conceived idea and poorly mismanaged, and the failed attempt, attempts to attract jobs to our city. It's what I call, if you build it, they will come, they will come syndrome. But they did not come, did they? So why am I here tonight? I want to state for the, fact, for, the, for the fact to this council that I truly do not believe this recovery plan will work at least the way it's being put forward to us. I do believe our taxes will be raised near the 81% or more than 35% proposed. And I do not believe the city will run the table what needs to get accomplished. Because some of it, frankly, is out of our, the, the city's hands and in the state legislatures. But I am not here tonight to list the shortcomings of the city council or the mayor, but I am here to help. I have come up with some solutions which I would like to put forward for your consideration this evening. First, let's talk about the elephant in the room, jobs. We need them. The only way we are going to increase the tax base in this city is by attracting jobs and residents. But how? Well, I would put forward a plan, a proposal really, that would give businesses a tax credit for every full-time worker they employ within the city limits. If they are city residents, granted, this business, if, if hire them, they will get a $5,000 tax uh, break. If they are a, uh, if they hire military personnel, they should get a $7,500 tax break. Second, I would offer businesses KOZ zones. I know this is not popular. But they have to be managed wisely. How, you ask? Well, first, allow it for seven years, but with some conditions. To qualify for the KOZ zone, the land and building must be deeded to the owner. Let's say Barnes Noble wanted to build here. They must own the land and building within the seven years free and clear, so the city isn't stuck with the building. If they fail to do so, they should be subject to all the back taxes from the last seven years, which we forgave them, plus interest. This would not include the high rate taxes, which I proposed earlier. They would still get to keep those tax breaks since they fulfilled that obligation to the city. Now, do I think this is all we need? Of course not. But it would get the ball moving in the right direction. Morale of the city is horrible. I'm disgusted every time I go out in my travels, I hear how bad the city is. Someone remarked to me just last night, it starts by removing the mayor and council. That will come. That needs to be done. But it starts with the people. The people are what make the city great. We have to give people a reason to want to stay in the city. So I would propose the residents who live and work in the city get their privilege to work taxes waived or cut. They are paying property taxes, wage taxes, emergency taxes, and city income taxes. This $52 fee should be waived or cut for the people who live and work within the city limits. For instance, if you live in Clark Summit and work in the city of Scranton, you get charged the fee. But if you work in Scranton and live in Westside, for example, your fee should be waived or cut. Should we be punishing those who are directly contributing to the city? It's not right. The commuter tax should be in place for those living outside the city. I don't have any problem charging people who live outside the city uh, using, paying their fair share. They're using our roads, our bridges, our infrastructure, our emergency services. 
Materials for building roads and bridges aren't coming down. How can we possibly keep this tax the same? It's irresponsible. We need a way to entice people to want to move or to stay in Scranton. If we start giving some perks to homeowners within the city limits, just maybe it could attract people who to want to move and live here. Next, I'd like to talk about the mercantile tax. I have talked to some business owners in the last couple of weeks about this, and here are some solutions they've put forward to me that I really do agree with, and they make sense. Here, we should be taxing on their net, not their gross. This gives businesses the freedom uh, to clear their overhead. Hire, hire extra workers, uh, and, and then contribute to the city. It will promote growth, and it's the right thing to do. In the last few weeks, I've talked to, to many owners in uh, the city of Scranton, here in the city, and I've asked how, they, how the city can help them stay in business, uh, and the number one uh, complaint they have is parking. Parking is atrocious. Uh, updated parking meters that can take credit cards, businesses shouldn't have, and businesses shouldn't have to call whenever a light goes out in front of their business. And, and even, if, even if it does, they don't know who to call. They don't have a phone number. They don't know where to go, where to turn to. Many business owners do not even know when the street, uh, or what to do when the street light is outside, when, what to do uh, when their business goes dark. There has to be a better way to do this. I have briefly gone on about to help businesses and homeowners alike, now indirectly helping the city with revenues. In my proposal that I put forward, I ask sacrifices from everybody. For too long, we have given tax cuts with reckless abandon. So I propose a 45% tax increase on the day, get pass, on the day this proposal gets passed. So for example, in 2013, if this proposal got passed in 2013, the citizens will get a 45% tax increase. In year two, I propose a 15% decrease. And in year three, in 2015, another 15% decrease. That tells us, that tells the citizens of Scranton, invest in us for the next three years. Uh, that, yes, in the first year, your taxes will go up. But we promise you, if you invest with us, your taxes will go down in 2014 and 2015. It's, uh, and thank you, Mr. Thank you very much. Thank you. Andy Spiraglia. <coughs> Andy Spiraglia, good citizen of Scranton, fellow Scrantonians. Mr. Joyce, I listened to your speech on TV, especially how you described by privatizing the DPW refuse collection, our bags may go up. But that's only one side of that coin. Why didn't you give the other side of the coin? How many men would not be working? How much salaries we would be saving? How much on pension costs we would save? How much on fringe benefits we would save? and how much on pension we would save. Every man that we could actually decrease in the city is a plus. I don't know when we, if we don't do it, we're gonna be in trouble. But you didn't even talk about the refuse fee. If it was private, privatization, would we be paying the refuse fee or would the private contractor be paying that refuse fee? No. And the tonnage up there. And the gas, the wear and tear on the vehicles the gas. All these things add up. Now, whether we do it or not, it's immaterial. But when you give a presentation and you give only one side of the coin, you've got to give the other side. There's always a negative and a positive. The DPW, of course, does a lot of other things besides a collect refuge. We all know that. We all know that maybe only a small portion of that is actually involved in the refuge. But that figure you should give instead of sitting there and running him down on saying about it. But you know what? He was at Paul Fu Rogan. He should have came up with all them figures and gave them to you and said this is what would be saved by privatizing the collection of uh, refuge. I mean, when you're up there, 
You try to get both sides of the story all the time. There's a lot of negatives, too. You know, we use the vehicles to pull, uh, pull the roads. We also use some of the vehicles to go out there and fill potholes. There's a lot of negatives and positives to all kinds of prepositions we offer. But try to give a complete proposal when you say one thing or the other, because a lot of things are more than just the bag cost. You also have a lot of savings on the other end of that. Now, how it would really affect the city, I won't know because I didn't do a study on it. And you, like you keep telling me, you can't do it until, what was it, 14 or 13 or something like that, when their contract runs out, or even if you wanted to do it. But anyway, you should always have them figures available. Whether you do it or not, at least they're there, they've been studied, and you know exactly what you're doing when it comes up to a budget. So you're not getting all these surprises. Every time we came before you in the last, well, say six months, you've been getting surprise after surprise after surprise. We all know that. We all know you're trying your best. We all know that too. Maybe some people does, some people don't. Everybody can offer solutions, but anybody that lived in the city for as long as I had realized the solutions are very narrow at this point. We all know the huge tax increase is coming. There's no way out of it. We know that. But when we give a presentation, try to give the positive and the negative, both sides of the coin. And then, and then people on the outside that here can make up their own mind what to accept or not resent. But when you only give one side, they think you're hiding something on the other. And that's not right. You don't want to hide anything. You want to be as open and forthcoming as you can. And that's the only thing you can do. When the axe falls, there's nothing you can do. It's going to do it, it's going to do it. We all know that. But at least the people know that you were very honest in that position and you did your very best to explain all aspects of everything that happened. I'm not even sure what that increments is, what that 6.2 loan, I didn't get into it. It sounds like they're giving you so much, then you have to pay back so much, and they're going to give you so much, and then you got to pay back so much. I don't know if that's the way it works or not. I don't know. I know that's how a Ponzi scheme works. I hope it's not similar to a Ponzi scheme. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ozzie Quinn. Ozzie Quinn, Grant. Grand Taxpayers Association. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. You hear everybody say about how bad the city is, like the gentleman I heard before. And uh, it's some wonder. You look at the last week, PCN had three reporters from the Scranton Times, not reporters, three staff members. And uh, they were saying how stubborn the city council is, how bad the city council is, and how brave the mayor is, and whatnot, you know. And uh, can you see in the paper today they're going to get the, uh, the line of family is going to get the uh, presidential award from the University of Scranton? I graduated from the University of Scranton. I don't think I was told to give a vote or asked to give a vote. I don't know where it's coming, but it seems like a big PR thing coming from the uh, Times in regards to trying to hide up 10 years of uh, malfeasance in the city of Scranton by their uh, going hand in hand, not only hand in hand, financially contributing since 2001 to the Doherty campaign and not doing anything about it, not doing anything about it whatsoever. They just kept on going and going and uh, Mrs. Evans, you know, uh, and I know the rest of the councils will be here yet, you know, you spoke so year after year on the, with those, before those councils and everything, and uh, the reporters here about the about the debt, the debt, and they never investigated. They never did anything. Now they're trying to turn it around to make you three people look like the people who are causing all the problems. Well, you know, they're not fooling the, the people. Okay, I think the, you, their circulation is going down. I just saw the audit. And so I think that they're going to answer for a lot, okay? Now, I really think that, uh, uh, one other thing too is on the, uh, 
the agenda tonight. You have the capital budget. Yeah, oh, that's a laugher. <laughs> if I ever saw one, capital budget's in the uh, it's in the home rule charter and it's to be funded. Uh, it goes to council three months before the budget and it's to be funded for three to five years or whatever, year by year and so on. Oh, we don't have any funds. We don't have any money. Now, if you take the community development block grant and if you've planned to use that money for some of the infrastructure in the neighborhoods, that went down so terribly since the Doherty administration and Scranton Times just let it go down. You know, maybe you could do something with that uh, capital budget. But right now, I mean, he's still going with that economic development loan. My God. You know, you might as well bounce your head off the wall with trying to think you're going to you're going to you're going to get create jobs in the city through that economic development law. All you did was create waiters and waitresses, and God bless them, they only get paid a dollar eighty six an hour. They have to depend on taxes on, on tips. So, I just I hope that you realize that you know this Doherty administration and the Scranton Times has led us down a path. And now it seems like the Scranton Times is doing a big PR to try to turn it around to make your council look like the bad guys. And it's not so. I'm, I, I'm, I've been around for a long time, watch city government, watch county government, watch the school government, watch the Scranton Times. And I know how they act. They used to have a reporter right here that used to investigate when there was something going on at City Hall. That's gone. When Doherty came in, that went. So, you know, don't, please. The public out there realize you're going to pay community tax? Don't blame it on these people. Blame it on the Doherty administration and the Scranton Times for not staying on top of the financial crisis in the city of Scranton since 2002 to the present. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I think I, I just want to add very briefly. You make an excellent point in that this financial crisis didn't occur overnight. This is something that has been building and building monthly, annually, since 2002. And uh, I think anyone with even common sense knows that what has happened is not the fault of Scranton City Council. Council has been trying to solve the problems that are facing the city and the people of the city. Um, well, I don't want to take Mr. any more time, and I'm going to call up Mr. Spindler. Thank you, Council. Les Spindler, city resident, homeowner, taxpayer. Uh, first of all, that was good news that Mrs. Evans, you went outside about the parking authority. Uh, that's, I'm glad there's going to be an ordinance like that outside. And I want to commend Council and Attorney Hughes. It's a step in the right direction. It's about time somebody's finally doing something with the parking authority. They've been a thorn in the city side for years and years. It's about time somebody finally did something. So, on behalf of this taxpayer, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, First thing, I have an issue with two speakers from two weeks ago. First, I hope he's okay with me, using his name, Lee Morgan. He called this council a rubber stamp council. I have to firmly disagree. I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know if anything you've ever rubber stamped. You haven't rubber stamped any budgets. He say you rubber stamped this recovery plan. Which I disagree with that. But he's got his freedom of speech. I think he's wrong. I, just to keep spewing venom because he's not sitting up there. Uh, secondly, Mr. Ron Elman chastised this council for raising taxes. As Mrs. Evans said, she took the words right out of my mouth. It's not this council's fault. Their hands were tied. It's the fault of the councils of Mayor Doherty's first two terms. The eight years of rubber stamping which Mr. McGough was included in. That's the problem, not this city council. So if anybody's angry with this city council for raising taxes, they're wrong. Nobody wants to pay higher taxes, but something's got to be done. Look back at the first eight years of Mayor Doherty. That's been the problem. Uh, moving on. It was two weeks ago, or maybe three weeks ago, I lost track. A woman came here, and she wanted council to 
look into an ordinance to have people spay or neuter their pets. I'm not a lawyer, but I don't think you can legally force somebody to spay or neuter their pets. I'm all for that. I have pets that are spayed or neutered, but I don't think you can legally go to somebody and say, you have to spay or neuter your pet. So I, I don't think you can ever pass an ordinance like that. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Lastly, an article in the Dirty Newsletter on Tuesday. Texting violators in Scranton 10. Yeah, since the, the texting law was passed, they cited fewer than 10 people. And just a couple quotes in here. It says, because talking or making phone calls is not illegal, state ban tough to enforce. Well, talking or making calls is illegal. It's, uh, it's, uh, can't think of the word I'm trying to think. It's distracted driving. Distracted driving is illegal. Doing anything with your phone is distracted driving. That's illegal. I don't know what the printing in the paper is, but it, it's an old fact that distracted driving is against the law. And uh, here's another quote. It's difficult for an officer to discern whether a driver is texting or looking up numbers on their phone. Carl Graziano, acting police chief. Again, whether they're texting or looking up numbers, both are illegal. Just cite them for distracted driving. It's simple. I'm not a, a police officer. I know. They should know the laws. I don't know how Acting Chief Graziano can say something like that. It's been years and years where distracted driving is against the law. And further on in this article, the Chief of Dixon City says that. We can't cite them for distracted driving. So why don't they? That that's, could be a great revenue source for this city because I'll bet you you could stand on a street corner, hey, probably eight out of ten cars, somebody's doing something with their cell phone. So, come on, people, let's start citing them for distracted driving. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Doug Miller. Good evening, Council Doug Miller Scranton. Good evening. I'd just like to uh, begin briefly. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, I was uh, somewhat scolded by Mr. Jackowitz for. Uh, what he uh, alleged to be grandstanding by myself uh, from the podium. And he brought up one of uh, my actions from several months ago, uh, as we can recall, when uh, at that time we uh, were hope hopeful that the mayor would come forward in a public setting. And I believe we all remember I pushed uh, forward the, uh, the big boy chair uh, for our six councilmen. And, uh, you know, uh, several weeks ago, uh, our dreams uh, came into fruition. The mayor came forward in a public setting and uh, he held himself accountable. But the whole issue with the chair and that it being grandstanding uh, kind of made me chuckle a little bit last week. If any of us watched the uh, Republican convention, uh, Mr. Clint Eastwood uh, gave a speech uh, before the delegates uh, with an empty chair right next to him, hoping that uh, President Obama would come forward. Uh, maybe Mr. Eastwood caught a replay of a council meeting and picked up on the idea, but I did get a chuckle. I found it amusing. And I thought I'd just share that with Mr. Jackowitz tonight. I know he's not here, but, uh, you know, it worked here. Maybe Mr. Eastwood will uh, get President Obama to come forward and debate him sometime in the future. So just kind of found that amusing, and I don't take it personal, uh, you know, the criticism I've been dealing with it for many years now. Uh, I just uh, thought I'd share that. Uh, but moving on to some serious matters tonight uh, with the agenda. Uh, I believe it's 5C, the ordinance that Attorney Hughes will go into detail later on. Uh, certainly a long time coming with this, with the parking authority. I'm glad to see that we're finally taking action. Uh, I believe this will certainly uh, begin the process of dissolving the SPA. Once and for all, getting rid of a, a headache that we've had to deal with for many years now. And certainly has caused much of our financial problems. And uh, as I stated, uh, I look forward to hearing uh, Attorney Hughes' presentation. And uh, I'll uh, reserve my comments uh, in the future. You know, as we uh, sit back and we recap tonight, uh, you know, the events that transpired over the last several months dealing with the recovery plan, uh, you know, I want to just take this time to basically sum it up and basically uh, make these my final comments on the recovery plan as we need to move on with other issues. Uh, you know, we're now going to get into budget season and uh, the issues are just going to continue to grow. But basically to summarize the whole thing here in a nutshell and put a ball on it, you know, when we take a look and we step back, at the decisions that this council had to make, 
We need to keep in mind that these were difficult choices you had to make. You dealt with many obstacles. Um, you, know, you dealt with an administration that at times was uh, uncooperative. But you showing the leadership that you've shown uh, throughout these three years, we're able to reach out and build a relationship. And you forced the mayor to come forward and sit down and negotiate in good faith. And that's your doing. And you put a plan together that you felt was in the best interest of the residents of this city. You know, we could sit up here and we could say that it's a perfect plan. But I don't think we ever claimed that it was a perfect plan. I certainly don't feel it is. And I know you don't feel it is. We've been told that the recovery plan is all pie in the sky and it's all wishful thinking. But what bothered me with those, <clears throat> excuse me, what bothered me with statements such as that was that if we don't try something, how do we know we can't accomplish it? It's easy to say, no, you can't do this, you can't do that. But if we don't go after the nonprofits and we don't reach out to them, how do we know we can never receive a dime from them? You know, how do we know we can't receive revenue? I think a lot of this has to do with uh, the fact that if we had an administration that from day one followed through on several revenue enhancements that this council had in, right in the beginning, we'd probably, have a, we'd probably be preaching a different tune tonight. But we didn't have that. And we can't go back, we can't change any of that. What happened in the past is in the past. We need to move full speed ahead. But the, taking the easy way out would have gotten us nowhere. You know, I sat, I heard a lot of grandstanding. I heard a lot of objections, but I never heard any alternatives. You know, even tonight, we're against this, we're against that. But we didn't hear anything better. And when you're going to come forward and you're going to be critical and you're going to be against something, it's my opinion that you should have a plan yourself. We didn't have that for many people, even elected leaders in the city. And two weeks ago, I got into a debate with one of those individuals who simply thought no was the easy way out. No doesn't accomplish anything. You know, I understand we have a long way to go, and many people doubt that we'll ever get out of this financial disaster, but this didn't all happen overnight, and I think that's where people have been misled, is that we believe that this has all transpired over three years, and that we want to point the finger at council. No, this is a snowball effect that we've had to deal with for 12 years now, caused by an administration that has run the city reckless since day one. And now today, we're feeling the pain. And now today, we have a council that's had to make tough choices. And no raising taxes isn't easy. And anybody that thinks that, I uh, strongly disagree. You know, I commend you for all you've done. People could say that I'm a lap dog. You know, people want to make comments that I come up here and I grandstand and I pat the council on the back. No, I come up here and I commend a council that I know is looking out for me and the residents of this city. And you can say what you want. But I know that you're looking out for us, and you should be commended for everything you did. Mr. Joyce, our finance chair, all the hard work. I know what you've all gone through. Mr. Roskam, Mrs. Evans, you're all to be commended because you did your homework, you put your minds together, and you came up with a plan that you feel is in the best interest moving forward. We're not only thinking about today, but we're thinking about the future. And I want to thank you for all your hard work and this recovery plan process. You've truly been the champions of the people, and I ask you to stay the course and continue to look out for the residents of this city. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Gerard Hedman. Good evening, Council. Good evening, Good evening. Gerard Hetman from the Lackawanna County Department of Community Relations. I would like to begin this evening by issuing a reminder to Council and all of our city and county residents, both here and watching at home, that this coming Tuesday, September 11th, will be our first Lackawanna County Senior Health Fair. The fair will take place from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Lackawanna County Trolley Museum, located at 300 Cliff Street in Scranton, on the grounds of the Steamtown National Historic Site. Over the past several weeks, myself and other members of our Lackawanna County Department of Community Relations have spent a great deal of time and effort planning the event, and we're looking forward to a great turnout. Uh, with that in mind, we have over 50 exhibitors, uh, businesses, agencies, and other entities from around the community that deal in some capacity with senior health and wellness that will be attending the health fair in some capacity. Uh, that most uh, popularly includes free flu shots uh, that will be offered for seniors. The only thing that we ask is that seniors bring some form of identification uh, just so they can get some proof or receipt 
that issue that shows that they got the flu shot for that year uh, for their medical records. Um, in regards to transportation, I said in a previous meeting that we were working on transportation options for senior residents who could not drive or could not walk to the trial museum the day of the event. Uh, for information on transportation, I would ask that any senior who wishes to get a ride from our coordinated transportation department to please contact my coworker, Michelle Newberry, at 570-963-6743, extension 1873. Again, that's 570-963-6743, extension 1873. We're working with all of the senior centers in Lackawanna County so that seniors can go to their nearest center and that day of the event get a ride from coordinated transportation. And we're still working to schedule out uh, tomorrow with exactly what times that will be at. But the centers will have that information and seniors can go and get a ride to the health fair uh, free of charge. So we look forward to a great turnout. As I said, it's been a lot of planning, but we're looking to a great, uh, fun, interactive event for all of our senior residents. And uh, everyone is welcome to come out. There will be some refreshments. And again, we'll have over 50 uh, vendors and exhibitors on hand. Uh, another announcement this evening is that the Lackawanna County Highway Safety Program, in conjunction with the Pennsylvania State Police and other local law enforcement agencies, will be conducting a free child car seat safety check on Wednesday, September 19th at McDade Park in Scranton from 10 o'clock a.m. to 2 o'clock p.m. This is a free opportunity for parents and others who use car seats in their vehicles, as school goes back now especially, to have police and law enforcement check the installation on those. I know it's been a long time since I've ridden in the car seat, so I can, I can install it myself. Um, probably even when reading instructions, it's something that sometimes folks intend well, but they're not able to execute uh, properly, and this is a chance for them to work with law enforcement briefly and free of charge to get that checked out. Um, last but not least, the Lackawanna County Recycling Center will be conducting a countywide tire collection during regular business hours from September 24th through September 29th. Information on the tire collection can be obtained by con calling 570-963-2017, extension 1. That's 570-963-2017, extension 1. Uh, the cost is $2 per tire, which I believe goes to defraying the cost of the actual tire disposal. Uh, tires are accepted that are 13 inches to 18 inches off the rim. Uh, that's all I have for this evening. I will be here in case any residents or anybody attending has questions about the health fair. Again, we welcome all residents to come out. There is adequate parking there at the site for any resident who does want to drive themselves uh, to the event. And again, it's right on the grounds of Steamtown. As soon as you pull in, you just have to go around the U-turn uh, to get to the building. Uh, is, is that anything I can do for you? Uh, Mr. Hedman, yes. have you provided uh, the specifics of these events to ECTV so that they can continue to broadcast them prior to the actual dates of the events? I have not myself. Uh, several of my coworkers have provided details of the events to various community agencies. Uh, with regards to these, we can check tomorrow and I can see if any of them have done it already with ECTV. If not, we can provide these events tomorrow, the details, and we can establish a system in the future where we mm -hmm. do provide those events uh, for continual rebroadcasting. So, Very good. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Thank you. Lynn Morgan. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, tonight I'd like to start by saying, you know, you talked about 5C, but the agenda's blank, so I don't know what happened there, but I'd just like to throw that out there. Um, I'd also like to say that I agree with what a lot of Ron Elman said here. And, you know, there's been some, um, I don't know, criticism of me saying this council is a rubber stamp council. I firmly believe that. And I'd like to illustrate that with one point here tonight. The revised, updated Act 47 recovery plan was enacted by this council. But which plan did we enact? The August 7th plan, which we had a special meeting for or the August 24th plan that we didn't have a meeting for. Now, I have to question whether any legislative body is following any real rules at all when they don't have a meeting on a revised and updated version. The other problem I have is that basically what I see has happened here is this. We've created
negotiate a recovery plan to borrow money. But there's no recovery here because we're counting on too many things that the city of Scranton has no power over. I mean, whether it's the commuter tax, which I think is a terrible thing to do to people. Because um, the people who come into this city from outside the city to work, they didn't create this problem. They're not the ones that voted to put these administrations in. And you know something? Even with that said, I think what the governor said was the most atrocious thing I've ever heard of from an elected official. And he said that I hope that the city doesn't come to the state looking for money. And my problem with that statement is the PEL was here running this ship. They did a terrible job. All the residents were thrown in the water. The blight that happened in the city didn't happen overnight. I think what we have in this country is a total political disconnect. You know, some people may not care for my opinions, but I think that we've got two people running for president who have no clue what's going on in this country. And I think that we've got elected officials on multiple layers of this government who have no respect for the residents and the citizens of this country. Some people may disagree. You know something? Yes, I have run for office before, and I've knocked on doors, and I haven't really spent any money. But you know something? I'm moved by my commitments and my ideas. And the most important thing to me are the people. And when we take a recovery plan that's been revived, and we vote on it, and we enact it, I have to question what's legal about it. Yeah, we held a special meeting on one plan, but this is a different plan because revised and updated means something. These are words. Words have meanings. Okay? Now, we're going to talk about what the mayor's done. I have to be honest with you and say this. The mayor was only a councilman at the time the American Anglian deal went through when the city was sanctioned. Okay, now it's pretty easy to blame everybody for the things that are going on here. As a matter of fact, at the time, the Scranton Times printed an article, an article where I believe allegedly CCAT took money not to file a brief in court to fight it. And then, maybe I'm wrong, but I thought that the Scranton Sewer Authority borrowed the money to pay the debt off to American Anglian. So, I mean, who's serving who here? And I find this document to be really atrocious. Because all we're doing is we're coming up with a formula to borrow more money in order to, I mean, to tax more to borrow money. But there's no real solutions to our problem in this document. Because the truth of the matter is that this city is so far over a cliff that the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania needs to step up to the plate and come here with money. And the reason for that is they've done such an atrocious job of overseeing the city's recovery plan from the first time we talked about Act 47 at St. Mary's Center. And that's not a shot at this council, it's a fact. And this city is where it is because elected officials on multiple layers of government didn't do their job. Now, do I criticize council for not issuing subpoenas? Most certainly I do. Because council has an oversight of in this uh, Home Rule Charter. But you know something? The PEL also had a right to come in here and make sure that there was a recovery plan. Now, I read the mayor's first plan, and it was at the Scram Public Library, and at that time I stated it wasn't a plan. And now all these years later, we find it's not a plan. And you know the real troubling thing is I spent two days this week down at the administration building at the school district watching young children being registered into the Scranton School District. The most troubling thing I heard there was, I'm hungry, and the amount of poverty I see there. You know something? We've got a lot of problems, and we should solve them. But the last thing we should have ever did was use a legislative body to push something through that wasn't the plan that the public hearing was held on. Thank you. Thank you. Is there Thanks. anyone else who cares to address council? Good evening, Council. Uh, Dave Dobson, resident of Scranton. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'd like to also uh, voice my approval of how things worked out here. Not that they're not painful, but we uh, we couldn't go any further with the way things were going. And hopefully, with a lot of hard work, things will improve. That's all I can say. 
things don't change overnight. We have a lot of, we're only a, a small part of the whole uh, American society and country. And uh, uh, I pointed out before that outsourcing and so forth has uh, seriously harmed our economic health. And uh, we have to deal with it. And it's certainly beyond our control in most instances. Uh, now, in the future, I plan to uh, uh, submit a uh, suggestions in writing. But for tonight, I'm once again going to mention box zone. I mean, I don't always approve of my friend Ron Elman how radical he gets, but we are having a lot of nonprofits hogging up our uh, our uh, space and taxable areas in the city, and uh, uh, something has to change there. We can't keep paying for what the whole American society or even foreign exchange students might be coming in and taking advantage of. And uh, streets, once again, we need a post inspection with utility work. Music streets get messier as we go, and it was, it was, it's not even a year. There must be five or six repairs in three blocks of Music Street between Cosmos and the stoplight uh, up at Harrison Avenue and Crown. And it's really a shame, and it's ugly, and the car bounces all over, so it's not done properly. I uh, looked at my sewer bill today, and uh, it's kind of disturbing because they didn't have an accurate, uh, and I'm going to have to keep my water bill, but they didn't have an accurate account of how much water I u really used because it said something like 200 gallons. And the uh, half of the bill was uh, for consumption charges. So, I mean, this has to change. Uh, people conserve water. I, I. Uh, collect water and use uh, use vegetable oil on the top of the barrel and water my garden and stuff from rainwater to save money and then I get whacked with forty dollars a month sewer bill. It's not not kosher. Um, and we have a problem with housing here. And uh, Mr. Morgan, he owns a house that he was forbidden to rent apartments out and the place is mammoth. The place is mammoth and uh, we need to change some of our policy. We have Aunt Millie living in a four bedroom house. Her family all moved away. Her husband passed away. And they could be changed and uh, we could have cheaper housing in this town. And Aunt Millie won't have so much trouble paying her taxes. On this trash, I do not support privatized trash. I mean, if, if people don't stop throwing stuff on my front lawn, I, I'm going to have to invoke the stand your ground law or something against them. I, I, and I lived in other towns where uh, people would just take trash and throw it right on your lawn when you were out at work. And I mean, like, Tons of it. The, the one lady was mentally challenged downstairs. They used to get a nickel a bottle or can up in New York State because we live close to there. So they take all this up. Well, the one time they must have got turned away. So I must have had four or five large garbage bags of empty soda bottles and stuff just deposited on my porch. I had to bring the landlord into it and my wife, you know, when something like that happens to her, she's kind of hard to control. <laughs> Prussian English. <laughs> but uh, once again, I'd like to express my approval. And all we can do is try. We can't achieve everything overnight, and nothing's ever going to be perfect. Uh, but once again, I'd like to warn the unions on their vote uh, out in Ohio. They voted for John Kasich, and uh, he lifted their union rights for firemen, police, and 70% of the firemen and police voted for him. So 
we have better things to do than to restore union rights and have referendums and everything else. So be careful who you vote for. Make sure that they're pro labor and uh, keep in mind, don't vote for outsourcers. And uh, the Golden Parrot, once again, goes for the photo ID. I'm finding more and more elderly people uh, that are being disenfranchised. And uh, if I have a copy of the Constitution here, and it states on two different amendments, I think it's 15 and 17, this is the National Constitution, uh, that nobody's voting rights under any circumstances are to be abridged. So if they want to take your picture at the voting polls and make a lie like that, that's a bright idea. But stop making people jump through hoops. Uh, Governor, Government of Pennsylvania, thank you and have a good night. Bok, bok. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Good evening, Marie Schumacher, resident and taxpayer. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, first, I had something for everybody tonight, but I, I think I'm going to scrap that. Um, but I would like to talk first with Mr. McGough about rental registration. Uh, I would like to know if, and maybe, uh, maybe this is more f would be more for the solicitor, but through you, is the city at any added risk for lawsuits if something happens between the time? the person pays their fee and the uh, and something happens that would have been caught during the inspection does that put us at risk um, I, I don't know how to answer that I, I imagine that anything could put us at risk as attorney use often says yeah. you know anybody can sue for anything but um, I, mean, I don't I, I don't I don't see that it puts us at any uh, added risk, but uh, I don't know. Okay, well, let's slip down to, because I, mean, I think it's relevant. How many, how many inspectors will there be inspecting the rental properties? Uh, that's, that's a very good question. Uh, the inspections can be done by the, the safety inspections that are included in the... Yeah. The, the legislation can be done by um, basically anyone um, in the which department. I think it, it's the director, um, the housing inspectors, the um, yeah. I, I know I know one inspector, but okay, if that can be done. I, it, the exact I, number I don't know. I don't know how it's going to. I'm not sure how LIPS is going to implement. Doing those because I mean, I mean that relates. I to, think that's a good question. To, to my next one, which is how many how many rental properties are currently in the database, and have they all received letters informing them? As far as I know, I, I don't know the exact number. I know it's a, a it's a very limited number based on estimates that we have for. Could you could you possibly get that figure for next week? Because I mean I think it should be up there, quite quite high. Uh, yes. I, I provide. Yeah, I provide and, and as far as information. I know, as far as I know, uh, notice, notices were to be sent to every property that was in the that we did have in our database. Okay, there's a whole lot more, as you well know. Yes. I've given I've given you some ideas on paper in the past, and you know maybe maybe you need to revisit that. Um, does the procedure? I don't remember. It's been so long. Does the procedure include the verification of the agent with the agent themselves? Because I understand that some owners just put like the name of a resident, you know, a, a neighbor uh, on the, on, as their representative here, and sometimes they don't, they're not even aware of it until they get a call. So I think it might be wise to, ver you know, verify with a letter saying, we've been, you know, advised that you are yeah, I, I, again, I'm trying to remember as well. I don't have a copy of it with me, uh, but I, I'm pretty sure that there was some stronger language regarding the agent uh, that the agent had to be. You know, that, that there were certain uh, yeah. things that needed to be done. Mr. Lasker may remember as well. I, I'm not sure. I don't. 
but I know that we tried to address that issue somewhat. Okay, and then will these inspections be done annually? I believe so. It, again, that was uh, part of the, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, and again, I, I'll check on it uh, when I get home, um, that it was any new property, any new registrant, they would do the inspection. And then we were talking about maybe doing other inspections on a two-year basis rather than every year. Okay. Well, then I'll look for that for next week. And Mr. Rogan, I'll skip him since he's not here. Uh, Luke's, I guess, the, the loan from the, the union slash amalgamated. Um, uh, does the union president, John Judge, personally or the union get a finder's fee for the creation of this? No, the union uh, itself, the firefighters union, does not get a finder's fee for the creation of the loan, as to my knowledge, and to, to what I've received from Amalgamated Bank. Okay, and is the city's new co-financing advisor, uh, Michael Judge, of CaseCon Capital, related to the union president, John Judge? Um, I do not believe that, no. Michael Judge. No, thank you. Okay, and what entity will, will pay Council Solicitor Hughes? It will come out of the uh, total fees for the, uh, for the loan. So it will come from Amalgamated? Yes. I, I, because it'll, I'm, it'll I'm be concerned finished. about setting a precedent with the Home Rule Charter on, on two jobs, the, the whole two jobs issue. If, if the city were to pay him for another job other than his... From, from my position. knowledge, it comes from Amalgamated. Could you verify that for me next week? Thank yes, you. I will. It's it's a part. It's actually a part of the term sheet, and uh, the city um, solicitor's fee will come from Amalgamated as well. Okay, um, and then I, I really hope we've seen the last of three readings in in one night. I think there have been. I recognize there have been a lot of emergencies this year, but I think there's there's been far too many. And now over to the recovery plan for a few, and well, maybe one first for for Mr. Lascom. Um, I don't know about in, you were in, I know you were in with the state on the Mulberry Street issue, and I just think there are way too many too many crosswalks for the students. Five in one block is, to me, excessive. I think one at each corner. Uh, I think these young people have the ability to walk across a street to, uh, to cross. And they're still jaywalking, even with five uh, crosswalks there. So I, I think something needs to be done about that to reduce the number, because uh, they've got four at the two corners, and then they've got the one in the middle of the block. Um, will the source of funding for the, the current uh, unfunded debt dictated by the court be revealed tonight, along with all the fees? Uh, Could you please repeat your question? I'm yeah. sorry, I didn't hear you. Okay, clearly. will the, the source of the funding, at, and when the DCED had their hearing here, they said that uh, a source had been identified to loan us that money. And I'm, what I'm asking is, will we get that information? Will that be announced tonight? In I'm not aware that there's a source no, that's been identified. I have no knowledge of that. I've not been contacted by the mayor about that. So I would question that statement. Uh, so naturally, uh, we won't be discussing that this evening because we have no information at this point. Okay. I will contact Ryan McGowan to try to find uh, the latest developments of, of who he is discussing terms with, though. Okay, thank you. And what account will the forensic audit be funded from? Is that going to be Council's professional services account? It would be uh, my understanding that it would be a professional service, yes. And then, do we have any idea who the lease buyback, or what the lease buyback property is, or who the top three contenders, and what property are the top three contenders? No, not at this time. And then I'll finish up then with one on the, um, a final one on the, 
on the recovery plan, on the whatever that's called, essentially the advertising on city property. Who's going to set the uh, the criteria for what is suitable? There's supposed to be a study done in a, in a consulting firm that would be uh, paid for by a state grant that, that would do that for us and that would assist us with uh, developing an MBRO program. Well, I, I, I do hope we citizens get to look at it because I, I do think there's some things that are appropriate and some things that are probably inappropriate for city property and I think it would be good to have that clarified before the program begins instead of after. Okay, on next week I'll be back with more. Thank you. Thank you and I, and I hope that you feel better. First cross. We'll see. About them invaders, Chris. Yeah, we put them right down in the ground. Yeah, the door tent does not a Thursday game this year. They canceled it. Oh, no. They had that, you know, the Monday they met on the air. I want to tell you guys that now. Stay home and eat your turn. Well, I need to check. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? By me, motions. Councilman McGough, do you? Did we want? Did you want to try to use to? So I was going to do it or after. I was actually going to call on, on him during my motions. Okay. Then I'll, I did have some questions about that, but uh, I'm sure we can do that later. Um, I took a moment to look up the distracted driving law for um, Pennsylvania uh, that, was, that was signed into law in March of 2012. There are only two primary offenses listed for distracted driving. Um, one is texting and one is a video screen forward of the driver. So you can't be watching television, I guess. Uh, or your computer or something. But those are the only two primary offenses. And primary offenses are ones that, you, that the police can stop you for, um, for, for doing that. Everything else is listed as a secondary offense. They cannot stop you for a secondary offense. But if it's, there's, you're stopped for something else, and uh, then they can add on the secondary offenses if they exist. So, um, and, and since we don't have in the city, since we don't have our own um, distracted driving law, then we are, uh, th then we use the, uh, the state law. So I, I, I would believe that that's what um, Chief Graziano was speaking of, the, the difficulty in enforcing those. Um, second, uh, just wanted very quickly, uh, we did receive um, some items uh, from OECD concerning the CDBG funding, and I was uh, hoping that uh, Councilman Rogan was here. Um, I do have some recommendations or things for changes that um, should I save and give them to Mr. Rogan or when? Yes, I, I believe he emailed. Yeah, he did. I mean, yeah, he sent him. And I didn't know whether, since he was not here, if uh, anyone I, I else think would. Actually, we'll, we do have time because uh, it will be introduced next week. Okay. On the 13th. On the 20th, it will go into sixth order. And prior to the meeting, a public hearing will be held on the 20th. And then we must wait 30 days. Right in order for the public to submit uh, their comments on it. And so it really won't uh, yeah, it, reach its final right. destination until maybe October 23rd or 25th. And thank you. You answered my second question. Um, and uh, I will save any other questions or comments uh, concerning the legislation until uh, after attorney use and when the legislation is presented. So thank you.
Thank you. And Councilman Wasson, do you have comments or motions this evening? Just a couple uh, briefly. Um, I know we had discussed the condition of police vehicles and stuff. Uh, I think it was two weeks ago that uh, we had uh, several of them in accidents. And I know there are quite a few that are out of service. I didn't have an opportunity to get over there uh, due to circumstances this past week, but I did speak to the uh, police chief uh, on the phone. And uh, I will be following up on the repairs because I believe there's at least 13 vehicles out of service right now. Uh, some of the cars are being doubled up on. There are four new cars uh, in New Jersey waiting to be delivered here. Um, I believe they should be here this week. They're waiting to get the police packages installed by the contractor out there that has the, uh, the contract for it. So hopefully those four cars will be here and in service within the next few days. And uh, we'll see what we can do to expedite the repairs on, on the current police vehicles that are out of service so we can keep our police officers safe and on the street. And uh, on that note, speaking of new police cars, uh, a few weeks ago, a new fire truck was put into service at Engine 2 in South Scranton. And if you recall, that's the fire truck that this city council funded through uh, OECD, through the CWG funding. And, uh, you know, that, that's a big asset. It, it's a nice piece of equipment. It was actually made in Pennsylvania, in Neskahoning at Kovach, KME. And uh, I hope it serves the citizens well. But uh, it's just another step towards uh, protecting your public safety. And just lastly, um, I spoke to uh, some of the neighbors back in Kaiser Valley, and they wanted to let me know that the uh, sewer authority, uh, through contact through Gene Skelton, has been actively actually uh, back there several times, and they started physically working this week on running some new lines to eliminate some of the perennial flooding that's been going on there. And they're going to watch that once it's hooked up and, and see if that resolves the problem and continue on if it doesn't. But uh, I do applaud the sewer authority for, you know, taking a bull by the horns on this. I know it's been an ongoing, long process. And uh, I do commend them for, for getting on it at this point. And hopefully the neighbors of Kaiser Valley will no longer suffer from the constant flooding every time there's a heavy rainstorm. And I believe that's all I have at this point. Thank you. And thank you. Councilman Joyce, do you have any comments or motions tonight? Yes, uh, briefly. To begin tonight, I'm going to address the capital budget. Uh, the process of capital budgeting essentially is the process of planning, evaluating, comparing, and selecting the long-term projects involved with the city. The capital budget that was sent down by the administration to council is a five-year plan beginning in 2013 and ending in 2017. A common question that one might ask is, what is in the capital budget? I don't believe that the uh, members of the audience and people at home have a copy of it. So to elaborate a little bit further, there are four sections of the capital budget that was presented to council by the administration. The first section is fire stations and equipment. As one knows, there are eight fire stations in the city of Scranton. The fire stations are in need of renovations and repair. Also, certain major equipment and apparatuses will need to be replaced. Renovations and repairs will need to continue, continuously take place. The estimated cost for fire stations and equipment section is $2.5 million. The second section of the capital budget deals with bridges, roads, curbs, and sidewalks. Improvements are needed with the City of Scranton's in infrastructure. <coughs> Projects in this section may include, but are not limited to, uh, street resurfacing, basically meaning paving as well as bridge and sidewalk reconstruction. The estimated cost for bridges, roads, curbs, and sidewalk section is $3 million. 
The third section is building improvements. As one knows, improvements will be needed for buildings owned by the City of Scranton. These buildings include City Hall, the DPW complex, and the police headquarters. Projects may include, but are not limited to, the following renovations, including general maintenance, new electrical wiring, and the replacement or repair of the elevator located in City Hall, which currently isn't um, ADA compliant from, from what I have heard. The estimated cost for building improvements uh, th that section is $1.5 million. The fourth section, God bless you, the fourth section of the capital budget is the park system. As stated by the administration, improvements will be needed at the various parks and pools. Projects may include, but are not limited to projects at Weston Field, Weston Park, Connell Park, the Capouse Avenue Pool, Novembrino Pool, and Nayog Park. At Weston Field, the administration wishes to replace the uh, concrete decking around the pool and install a new bathhouse, garage, filtration system, showmobile, and lighting. At Weston Park, the administration wishes to replace concrete decking around the pool and install a new bathhouse, security cameras, filtration system, and lighting. At Connell Park, the administration wishes to install security cameras. At the Kapaus Avenue Pool, the administration wishes to demolish the pool and bathhouse and replace with a new bathroom with the new bathroom facilities, as well as a splash park. At the Novembrino Pool, the administration wishes to demolish the pool and bathhouse and replace with a new bathroom facility, as well as install a splash park. At Nayog Park, the administration wishes to build a new garage install security cameras, a new filtration system, new lighting, and make electrical upgrades. The projected cost of the park system section is $7 million. The total amount of the capital budget is $14 million over the term of the five-year plan. The majority of funding for these products or projects as reported by the administration is to come from grants and contributions. In fact, $10.5 million is to come from grants and contributions. I currently have an email in to Ryan McGowan, our business administrator, to ask what grants and contributions the city expects to receive that will equate to $10.5 million for these projects. In addition, the administration expects to receive $1.5 million from one-time one revenue sources and $2 million from operating transfers from other funds. I also have an email in the Ryan McGowan asking where the one-time revenue sources are expected to come from as well as where the $2 million from other funds are coming from. I'm going to vote to introduce this piece of legislation tonight, but in the meantime, I hope to obtain answers to my questions. I would uh, also like to ask for the opinions of other council members as to what projects they, should, they believe should or should not be included or deleted from the capital budget. I would ask that other council members provide me their suggestions by Tuesday of next week. Um, in other news, there were two companies that bid on the parking meter enhancement system. These companies were IPS Group and Pango. With this in mind, uh, Mrs. Craig, can you please contact Mr. McGowan and ask what company was selected? Along with this, Northeast Revenue has submitted a report to Scranton City Council for the period ending on 8-31-2012 for delinquent taxes collected and distributed. For all years except 2004, 2005, and 2006, Northeast Revenue reported that they collected and distributed 47,122.72 to the city of Scranton after subtracting their fee, of course. For the years 2004, 5, and 6, Northeast Revenue reported that they have collected and distributed $8,319.33 to Penn Star Bank after subtracting their fees. As one may know, all delinquent taxes collected for the years 2004, 5, and 6 are directed distrib er, distributed directly to Penn Star Bank to pay for a loan that the Scranton Redevelopment Authority defaulted on. 
with them regarding the advanced sale of delinquent taxes for such years. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Good evening. On tonight's agenda, I have placed an ordinance terminating the cooperation agreement between the City and the Scranton Parking Authority, effective 12.01 a.m. October 8, 2012. The cooperation agreement provided 10% of the City's parking meter revenue to the Parking Authority for salaries of meter readers and collectors as well as for at least 50% of management salaries. Through termination of this agreement, the Parking Authority will no longer have sufficient funds to pay its employees. In the near future, it should be determined whether the meter readers and collector will be employed by the City of Scranton or by the new management company. However, the bulk of the city's parking meter revenue will be used to assist in making annual bond payments. At this time, I call on Solicitor Hughes to offer a full report regarding the Scranton Parking Authority. Uh, thank you, Madam President and Council members and the public. Uh, it's been a long road in a very short period of time to bring the Scranton Parking Authority uh, into a responsible position uh, and let's say to have some light shown on their finances. Um, I, I know a lot of people think that this should have happened a lot quicker but I could say that this is an entire process and it takes time to complete a legal process and I believe in my opinion, the process has been completed in a very short period of time. Um, in fact, I, I think we've accomplished an extremely uh, extraordinary result in a very short period of time since council, since the, since the parking authority appeared before council um, in June requesting almost a million dollars to make the June 1st bond payment. I believe it was in, they came in the end of May. Um, what has happened in that time period is that the insurance companies, they've insured the payment on the bonds, have had a receiver appointed, um, and as a result of Mr. Washoe being appointed as receiver, the one thing that is happening and it should happen tomorrow or early next week, is that a management company is going to be brought in to run the garages professionally in order to reduce expenses and increase revenue. The company that is being hired and the agreement is almost finalized, um, I've been informed by Council for, uh, by both Mr. Washoe and also by Council, that it will be Central Parking. Central Parking is the largest, the second largest, I'm sorry, it's the second largest uh, parking management company, only parking garages and also managing parking garages in the United States. It is currently in a merger negotiation with, with Standard Parking, which is the largest company in the United States. I believe it's listed in the, in the, on the New York Stock Exchange. And not only that, uh, I believe that they also uh, are an international company. To bring someone of that quality to Scranton to one of these garages, I think, is a major accomplishment. It's my understanding that they have had several management companies look at these facilities in order, before they made their decision. And of course, anyone of this caliber that is coming to Scranton uh, is coming here with the view that they know the situation to turn it around. And of course, they're going to get paid, and that's what they're entitled to. But uh, once they are hired, uh, that all of the monies that come in to the parking authority will be the responsibility of the receiver. 
uh, Mr. Washoe. So by next, hopefully by tomorrow, uh, the contract will be completed. It will be executed. Mr. Washoe can go into court next week uh, with that agreement, and he will take over the full operation of the parking authority, receive all of the monies that the parking authority has, and make and be, as, be responsible as the receiver uh, for those monies, and to, of course pay central parking uh, the management fee. Uh, in my discussions with the insurance companies, attorneys, uh, and Mr. Rosho, the goal is that to do this as soon as possible. The objective is to reduce expenses and to increase revenues. And of course, as that happens, it reduces the liability of the city of Scranton. Um, the one thing that is not under the receiver's jurisdiction, because it's not in accordance with any of the trust agreements, is the cooperation agreement executed in 1995 between the city and the Scranton Parking Authority, pursuant to which the Parking Authority, um, the Parking Authority uh, gets the money from, actually maintains the, the parking meters, uh, obtains the money for the city, and they receive 10 percent, a commission of 10 percent of all monies collected in the parking meters. Um, since Mr. Washoe is the receiver does not have jurisdiction over this contract, it would mean that if this contract were not terminated, uh, that the parking authority would remain in existence, would have over $100,000 a year in income, and could keep employees and run as a phantom agency. Uh, this is one thing that council does not want. The objective here is to terminate this agreement in accordance with Article 9, uh, which either party can do at any time, and just give the other party notice within, within 30 days uh, of the termination. Uh, so that in my review of the contract, that when this happens, in addition, um, the city of Scranton reimburses and actually makes the payment for all of the parking meter people to the Scranton Parking Authority. So the Scranton Parking Authority does not incur any expenses for the employees or for any of the meters, the repairs, any of the supplies. They get 10% of all the revenue collected from the meters. Instead of having the Parking Authority have this and have funds where they can continue in operation, the parking meter people will be brought back in to the city, who is paying your wages anyway, will then become employees of the city. Uh, all of that money is set forth in the budget, so that will not be an increase of any expenses for the city. And the city will be receiving the, the full 100% of the revenue from the parking meters. Um, this is especially noteworthy um, if the city, and I know they just put it out to bid, uh, for the meter enhancement program. Um, assuming that that would be, just for sake of discussion, that that, that would raise another hundred, let's say one million dollars, uh, that would mean that the parking authority would now have two hundred thousand dollars to spend as they see fit. Um, that's not the intent. You know, I think that, you know, as many of the speakers that come up to the podium and, and state that something, council should do something about certain issues, what we're doing here is that this money will now come into the city. The city does have an obligation to pay the, on the bonds, it's a, what's known as a double barrel bond in finance, in the event the parking authority cannot pay, the city has the responsibility to pay. Um, this money will stay with the city and be available to pay for that. Um, what we did is, looking at that, drafted this ordinance so that the, it would terminate on October 6th. 
at 12.01 a.m. and that at that time all the employees would then be employees of the city and the city will get 100% of the revenue. Um, a letter was sent today by Attorney Gallo, I mean, uh, Attorney Gallo on behalf of Landmark Bank saying that they have a security interest in the contract and that they're going to file a lawsuit. They want a meeting with Attorney Kelly and myself. Uh, I've reviewed the letter. I think the allegations are groundless um, on the basis that, first of all, when Landmark Bank lent the Scranton Parking Authority money back in September of 2011, Council knew nothing about the loan. The only way that we were informed of the loan was by reading it in the newspaper. And what was pledged as collateral were the funds of the contract, not the contract itself. I believe for that loan to be made, if they had done their due diligence, they would have seen that in this contract it could be terminated by either party in 30 days. That as long as the contract remained in, in effect, the bank did have a security interest in those funds. It does not have a security interest in the contract itself, which is what they're trying to imply. That by them making the loan and not coming to council, seeking, telling council what they were going to do, why they were making the loan, and seeking an assurance from council to amend the contract, uh, to state that as long as the loan was outstanding, we would not terminate it. Um, that was never done. This was done behind closed doors. It was a cloak and dagger, uh, strictly between uh, a backroom dealing between Landmark Bank and the Scranton Parking Authority to make that loan and they have no security interest in the contract itself. Um, I summarily dismiss the letter as being unfounded. Uh, there's no basis for them to file a lawsuit. Council is fully within its rights to terminate the agreement. And to me, it, it's certainly folly to continue to let the Scranton Parking Authority uh, continue to collect 10% of all the revenue from the parking meters, including any increased revenue that would come about because of a meter enhancement program when it is awarded by the city, when the city needs this money to pay the obligations of the Scranton Parking Authority. Uh, thank you. I, I just wanted to add quickly, and then I'm going to ask Mr. McGaw if he'd like to pose his questions to... I'll wait until the legislation. Okay. I did speak with Mayor Doherty today regarding uh, the legislation, and he is in agreement with it. Equally important tonight, I wish to clear up any confusion regarding proposed real estate tax increases. The actual tax increase is 35%, 12% in 2013, 9.7% in 2014, and 13.3% in 2015. Because rising pension costs were not included by the administration in the initial draft of the revised recovery plan, the tax increase was reported at 33% in early August. The figures were later adjusted to 35% to include increases in pension obligations. Although I can only speak for myself, I believe that my colleagues would agree. This council will never vote to approve a 79% tax increase not in 2012, not in 2013, not ever. Also, since
since this council believes in governmental transparency, it was pleased to note that the Scranton Times published all the related costs of TAN Series B of 2012, which the city recently received. However, I don't recall having read the itemized costs of all previous TANs, bond issues, and borrowings of the past 12, well, 10 years in the newspaper. Therefore, with my colleague's agreement, I ask Mrs. Craig to send letters to the appropriate department heads and related parties to request a breakdown of all costs incurred for any and all TANs, bond issues, and borrowings from January 2002 through December 2011, including any and all bank fees, attorney's fees, and bond council fees and or payments. Also, the breakdown must reflect whether each entity was paid through the operating budget, for example, from professional services, or through the cost of the financial transaction itself. Uh, next, as our public safety chair announced earlier, numerous police cars have been out of service some of which are parked at the DPW, while others are located at police headquarters. As a result, police officers have been doubling up in cars while it seems that some of the necessary repairs do not require costly parts. For the safety and welfare of our city residents, the police department needs its vehicles repaired and on the road as quickly as possible. Therefore, with my colleague's agreement, Council wishes to send a letter to DPW Director Dewar requiring a weekly report that identifies police vehicles that have been serviced, are awaiting repair, the reason for the waiting period, and the expected date of completion with a copy of each report to Chief Graziano. Uh, Council also received a response from OECD Director Linda Abley regarding the loan agreement with 408 Cedar Avenue. In her August 29th letter, she states, on March 9th, 2007, the City of Scranton OECD entered into a loan agreement with 408 Cedar Avenue LLC for Enterprise Zone Competitive Grant Funds. These grant funds are not delivered from federal HUD monies. On June 7th, 2012, we were notified that the above referenced property was sold at the Lackawanna County 2012 judicial sale. And that would have been the sale, I believe, conducted in February. And are in receipt of a check representing the approved court order distribution as share of proceeds. However, Ms. Abley did not report the dollar amount of the check received as the city and OECD's share of the county judicial sale proceeds. Consequently, our council staff followed up with the county and report that the check was in the amount of $8,000 and the property was sold for $18,000. Uh, further, Excellent research performed by Ms. Carrera, Assistant City Clerk, uh, indicates the following. Delinquent city real estate taxes owed on that property for 2009 and 2010 total uh, $1,496.95 and for 2011, $574.91. Again, with my colleague's agreement, I'd like a letter sent to Ms. Abley requesting responses to unanswered questions contained in our August 28th letter. When was the last payment made on the loan? What was the balance on the loan prior to the sale of the property? and who would be legally responsible for payment in full. 
include an additional question, please, Mrs. Creek. Will OECD take legal action to recover the remaining balance on the loan? So as not to confuse the issues, please attach a second letter to Ms. Abley requesting identification of any and all accounts and or programs included in the IDIS 2102-2011 and IDIS 2177-2012 action plans including 2012 IDIS unobligated funds which did not use allocated CDBG funding and the reasons for each. Now, uh, council received a complaint in August from a downtown resident, or a, a downtown resident, which I will provide to our office. Please send letters to the appropriate department heads so that they can determine how best to resolve the complaint. In addition, Southside residents report health concerns regarding a blighted vacant lot at 1006 Music Street. They state the brush is over 10 feet in height, and they fear the lot is a breeding ground for mosquitoes. Now, I know that uh, some of the residents have contacted council and Mr. Dewar by email. I saw his response, which was to contact Mr. Seitzinger, I nevertheless would like letters sent to both gentlemen, Mr. Dewar and Mr. Seitzinger, requesting a response within two weeks and what action will be taken and when. Can I just very briefly on that one? Mm -hmm. uh, I did talk to um, Mark Dewar about it and uh, I, I believe that they were trying to track down the owner of the property. Mm -hmm. And also I talked to uh, Pat Hinton, who has been in here in that south side, I forget what the, I the name is. So. Um, and uh, to ask if perhaps they could look into cleaning that lot, at least you know, temporarily, until something is done. So I'll look into that with Mr. Hinton again. Thank you. Uh, also, regarding complaints I received pertaining to Oliphant Avenue, we received a response from Marywood University, which I will read to you. Um, Wendy Yankelitis, Assistant Vice President of Buildings and Grounds, states, I am in receipt of your August 28, 2012 letter regarding Marywood University's Oliphant Avenue property. The university will begin the clearing of overgrown brush, grass, and trees the week of September 17, 2012. Now, just one more thing I wanted to say before uh, I close and we move on to the voting portion of tonight's meeting. I listen, I don't hear, I listen very carefully to the people who speak at council, just as I listen carefully to the people who call me, the people I meet and talk to, and I read carefully the emails that I receive. I've been here all my life. I didn't just get here or leave for something else and come back. I've always been here, so I know what the issues are, because your issues are my issues. And secondly, as for comments about this council being a rubber stamp, I do take umbrage with that. I have never been a rubber stamp, and my record attests to that. And anyone who feels differently needs to do the research and read through nine years worth of council meeting minutes, nine years worth of legislation to see where I stood on issues. And I think, you know, when we, we hear statements like, 
council does nothing. It couldn't be farther from the truth. And I don't want to sit here tonight and take your time up listing pages. I have them at home of the accomplishments of this council since it was sworn into office in January 2010. But I'm sure you can see even from tonight's meeting, the fact that a city authority has been taken on and held accountable by this council is unprecedented. It's never happened before. And yes, it's taking time, but serious, significant changes are occurring. And as for the financial crisis the city is facing, as I said before, this has been building since 2002. And yes, it's reached a climax because too much money was borrowed and mismanaged for too long by the city and by its authorities. But I believe there's a very good chance we would have been continuing along that same road. And the only reason we're not is because of this council and its office staff and attorney Hughes. The reason you know about these debts, the reason banks are finally, scrupulously, examining city finances and reading carefully contract language, then they never did this before, is because of what this council has brought to light. And it's taken a long time and a lot of hard work on the parts of a lot of people. And you might say, well, council's guilty. We're not guilty of a tax increase, and we're not guilty of causing the debt, but I'll, I'll tell you what we are guilty of, exposing the truth. And that's what had all the financial institutions in a tizzy, PAL, DCED, because it finally came out. I believe that's the right thing to do. And I think, you know, finally, as I, as I listen to everyone who comes up here week after week, I remember the days, and I know you do too, because most of the people who are here this evening have been coming here for longer than I've been a councilwoman. But I remember vividly even prior to my being seated, very disrespectful council presidents. And I remember being seated with council members who were highly disrespectful. And yes, these chambers were a circus. And yes, speakers were disrespected, mocked, laughed at, taunted. But since this council took office in 2010, each and every one of you have the opportunity to speak, to tell us what you think, your opinions are respected, whether or not we agree with them, and the questions that you ask, our office staff and this council work very hard to try to answer. We can't solve every problem and we don't have the answer to every question. Because at the same time, there is a tremendous amount of work that is ongoing. The legislation that you see just doesn't fall from an office. It takes a lot of homework and a lot of research, a lot of discussion, a lot of decision making. And it's all being done on your behalf. And so, I don't, as council president, I don't often speak this way. I try to, in many cases, withhold my opinion, remain reserved. 
but inside, I have not changed. I'm the same person that's fought for you and fought hard, and it is a blood sport, since 2004. That hasn't changed. And as I said earlier, 79%, I don't care what the newspaper wants to print, 79, 78, 81, have fun. It's not happening. Because I will not approve it. And as I said before, I don't think there's anyone here that will. We will find other ways. And I apologize for taking your time for these matters, but I felt after all this time, certain things needed to be said. Mrs. Craig? 5B, approving and accepting the City of Scranton capital budget for the year 2013, pursuant to Section 904 of the City's Home Rule Charter. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5C, an ordinance terminating the cooperation agreement between the City of Scranton and the Scranton Parking Authority as of 12.01 a.m. October 8, 2012, and giving notice to the Scranton Parking Authority that file of Council Number 104 of 1995 has been terminated as of 12.01 a.m. October 8, 2012. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that Item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. Yeah, I, I do have a couple of uh, comments. Um, first, in, well, first uh, thing is that uh, when I came to the council office yesterday, this, this was not even on the agenda. And uh, we're, we're now being asked to uh, vote on something that uh, has no backup. I, I guess one thing I would like to see is what the actual operating agree agreement says. Um, I, I just think that the urgency which with which this was put on the agenda was uh, <coughs> deprives us of an opportunity to be informed on the vote. Uh, secondly, I, I do have some questions about how the collection of meter revenue will take place. Uh, I realize that some employees will come back to the city, but I'm not sure that the, the city has the wherewithal to efficiently collect uh, the revenue that we would, that was normally collected. Um, there, there is no, there is no office in which to, from which to do this. Um, I understand that there is talk of uh, one person in the administration taking this on as a responsibility, which would be his third position within the uh, within the city government. So I. I I, I really do question the, the effectiveness and the efficiency with which we would collect the revenue. Uh, the other thing that I, I, I'm assuming that since the, we, we've said that the 10% fee or 10% reimbursement, uh, whatever, to the parking authority would no longer be done, uh, I, I guess that the assumption is that we will now continue to pay the SBA bond payments indefinitely uh, since they will have no revenue to pay them. Uh, it's, to me, it seems that we've now taken on another $50 million in debt um, by doing this. And the other problem that I have is that while the uh, claim that Landmark will will sue the city while it may be, while attorney use may feel it's unfounded. Uh, I, I just think that um, any lawsuit now from any bank uh, would uh, present a, a very negative image for 
the city as it moves forward with any borrowing. And I, I think it should be noted that the, the loan that Landmark did make to the SPA actually saved the city from making the bond payments um, in 2011. Uh, it was not some nefarious deal. And I just think all of these things are being thrown at us very quickly, and I really do not see the urgency in, in, in this legislation. That's all. Uh, I'd like to respond. Um, this isn't anything new. This was discussed at previous council meetings publicly and suggested by our solicitor. As for the urgency, well, there is indeed an urgency because you heard Solicitor Hughes say that possibly as soon as tomorrow, a new professional management company will be taking over. Now, they have to be paid. What we've got right now would be two management teams being paid. The new professionals coming in with a national reputation for doing a good job and the current management team that does not want to get out. We have to ultimately be responsible for these bond payments. Mr. Washer was going to be responsible for the money. It is ludicrous, ludicrous to be paying two people two people, I'm sorry, a professional management company and all that entails, as well as the old group under which the garages and the authority have been mismanaged. If we do not proceed with this termination of the cooperation agreement beginning tonight, you're just postponing the inevitable and flushing money down the toilet because you're saying you want to pay both. This will stop those payments to the former management. Now, as I said, I discussed this with the mayor today. Obviously, you did as well, Mr. McGough. Um, I uh, actually, I haven't been through my mail in its entirety, but I have not even seen the letter. And I know that we faxed the letter from uh, the attorney for Landmark Bank to our attorney, but I haven't seen the letter. But uh, apparently you have, or you have a copy of it. Well, you, you were quoting from it. No, I didn't quote from the letter. I just said that I was informed that they would, would in fact, no, there was something else that you said about. Uh... Well, just suffice to say, I, I, didn't, I have not seen it. Right okay, because I don't believe anyone on this council has. Um, but again, I too spoke with the mayor, and um, he has agreed to address the oversight of meter collectors. He also indicated that since we will soon have a new parking meter program in effect, that the future of the parking meters may well be debit cards and credit cards. In fact, um, his words to me were, I don't believe people carry around loose change anymore or even dollar bills. They use plastic and that's where the meters are heading. So. There may not be as much to oversee within the future as there have been in the past. But in addition to that, there's also the possibility that the new management company might want to uh, take some of that under its umbrella. So I think the, um, the concerns are uh, misplaced. Is there anyone else on the question? Madam President, if I could just clear up some, I, I just want to clear up some, some issues here. One is when central parking is retained and executes the agreement with the receiver, 
at that point, all of the money that's generated by the parking authority will be under the receiver's control, under Mr. Rosho's control. The Scranton Parking Authority will not have any money to pay any employees from the money that's generated from the parking garages. So all of that money is going to come in, it's going to be accounted for. Mr. Rosho has to supply to the court reports of every dollar he receives and that he pays out. That's the money that's going to be used to pay the bond payments. It's going to go to the trustee, the Wells Fargo Bank, to make the bond payments. In the event that money is insufficient, the city of Scranton has the legal liability to pay that money, to make the balance. The only money that the parking authority would have is from the parking meter revenue, because that does not come under Mr. Rosho's jurisdiction. It's not within Wells, Wells Fargo's responsibilities as a trustee. That was never pledged. Mm -hmm. So they, they could still function with that money and spend it as they see fit. I mean, all the bills that you got previously, going to lunches, going here, even Scopoletti, $150 a month car allowance, they could still continue with all of that. And that money could be going to a bond payment. And that's what this issue is about, is to cut off all the money to the Scranton Parking Authority. The board of the Scranton Parking Authority will still exist. It won't have any employees. It won't have any money to pay the employees. But that has to function because it still owns it's still there as the entity that's the owner of the garages. Subject to, now that a receiver is appointed, because there's been such misadministration and maladministration of the parking authority, that the receiver has control. And that's what the issue is here, is that that money has to come back into the city to make that bond payment. Why should it just be thrown away $100,000 a year plus, and maybe $200,000 a year? And that's going to reduce the city's liability on the bond issue. Hopefully, with professional managers in here, and looking at this, they'll come up with ideas as to how to generate more revenue, how to coordinate things. That's going to take place. And that's what this issue is, is that where's the money better better spent? Is it better spent uh, kept by the city or given to the SPA? In my opinion, and that's up to council, it's better to be spent, to kept, to kept here with the city and us keep the 10 percent, us keep the VIG on everything that's kept so that we can make the bond payment. And then the parking authority will still exist, the board will still exist, but they won't have anything to do. They won't have any money to pay any employees because that money that they'd be getting is going to be going to pay the bond issue. Thank it's you. It's that simple. And I, while you were speaking, I checked with our finance chair as to um, his memory of the line item in the city's operating budget for um, citation issuers, et cetera, the amount of money that is given annually to the parking authority that represents that 10%, and Mr. Joyce told me $562,000. That's the cost with uh, the employees and the and meter repairs right. and the meter heads. And so that's, we're talking like. over a half a million dollars here. That's sizable. That's nearly a September bond payment. And that's why this needs to be done. Is there anyone else on the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. If there's no further, oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I was ready to, we have sixth and seventh order. Sixth order, no business at this time. Seventh order, no business at this time. Thank you, Mrs. Craig, and my apologies. 
If there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.